Hello everybody. Let's see if anybody's here yet for the weekly Williamsburg Strath Spay and Real Society. Let's see. Well today, hey it's MJ. How are you doing MJ? Um, we're gonna be uh, working out of a a primary source, Neil Gao's first collection, um, and it was published in the 1780s. Uh, I forgot the actual date. Um, but, uh, hi, Kim. MJ's uh, hey. <laughs> um, so I, I sent a list out uh, to see if you, um, <clears throat> so you know what you're actually doing uh, today. Um, I'm going to try to get through the whole list. This. There's there's ten tunes on the list, um, so so we're gonna uh, work on that. The first one is um, on um, page seventeen. It's called Wadi Lang or the Lifting of the Linen. It's a reel, and um, I just talk about a little bit about this um, this collection. Um, when you're looking at 18th century collections, I've always thought that it's kind of like being uh, the closest we could possibly be to doing what they were doing back in the 18th century. We have the actual notes in front of us that they actually had, and they um, actually are, um, we're, we're playing on the same kind of instruments basically that they were playing. So th this is almost like a, like a time machine, just going back in time, the, the same kind of an experience that they would have been having. So, um, let me give everybody in the same the A that I'm using so that we can all all use the same basic basic note. So, um now the page numbers that I'm giving you are not the actual uh, page numbers. Hello, Diana. Um, these page numbers are the page numbers from the PDF, not the actual collection. So if you see a different page number in the corner, uh, I'm going by the actual uh, page number uh, in the PDF uh, that I, I gave the link to. Um, I apparently have a hard copy of a different edition of this, so I'm I'm going off of the actual one that's online on IMSLP, and God bless them, they uh, they really do uh, provide a lot of really great stuff. So I've got my uh, computer set up here so that you can so that I can actually see the whole tune, and um, it's um, this one tune you need to. Kind of scroll it. I've got it at 48%. So if you um, if you want to uh, have the whole tune in in your screen, so I'm gonna take it a, a little bit slow um, to to give you an idea what they sound like. Um, the nice thing about this, I don't know if you've noticed about this particular uh, collection, is that it's got a bass line, and which is really kind of nice uh, to have a bass line. Um, so if you've got uh, guitar players or piano players or, or cello players uh, playing along, they've got um, they've got a good accompaniment to be playing. So here's that tune.
So there we are. Hi, Maureen. Ken's here too. Jean. Hi, Jean. Um, so let's look at this tune here. Um, it starts off with uh, this this rhythm. Okay, that's a burl. <clears throat> And you should play it um, a little bit scrunchy, kind of into the string like that. Um, and that gives you a good, um, more percussive sound. So the first two notes are, and then the next note is. If you're having trouble doing that, there's a couple different things that you can do to emulate that sound. You can do a tap, uh, where is, where is it? just kind of tap on the string really lightly, about the same weight as you would um, a harmonic. Actually, that is a harmonic if you're using a third finger. Some people use their... Um, um, hello, Anne. Uh, some people use their fourth finger. I like to use my third finger. Either way, you're just tapping it really lightly. You're not actually making the. You're not doing that. So you can go. Okay, so that that's what it would sound like with a tap. Okay, so you can see that it's, it gives you a very similar kind of a sound to that sort of a thing. Um, hey, Ann Lee. Um, so uh, we've got uh, that particular sound. Or if you don't want to do a tap there or if you're feeling uncomfortable with that, you could just play a quarter note there. Um, Okay, so those are all different possibilities of what you can do. Just because it's written on the on the um, on the music doesn't mean it's a hundred percent what you have to play. It's it's one of those things where you can um, you can actually uh, kind of make up your own ideas. Um, do you see the trill there on the uh, on the eighth note on the E? Um, now you don't go. That you, that's not what that means. It's, that note goes by too fast to kind of to do a trill. So what generally in, in these particular kinds of, um, of collections, what that means is to do something there. So what you could do, you could, you could start at, uh, at, the, um, at the F sharp. And, and bring it down. So it's it's like a, a pull up, or you can do um, a tap again. So all all of those different uh, kinds of ornaments are possibilities for this particular tune. Um, now, if you look at the um, second line, the one two third measure of the third. Uh, of the, the third measure of the uh, second line, it, it's got a, a slur over that, and it's a pretty good slur actually. It's a it's a good. So, when when you see things that are marked in, they they didn't usually mark things in as much back then. So. They're worth trying out. Um, so, and that one actually does work pretty well. Um, so, so to get this one giving a nice rolling character, okay. So, so you can kind of go in a rolling fashion uh, by slurring groups of threes um, and um, slurring across the measure line. And you probably notice that I've been um, not playing all the same notes that are written there. Um, part of that is because I'm having trouble seeing with my bad glasses. And part of it is that just um, 
different versions you'll find uh, slightly different notes here um, so let's all try and play this one together okay um, I'll go a little bit slower okay so let's try that one one two one two three that was too fast um, if that's too fast um, that's that's okay you can kind of look down at the baseline and kind of figure out what they're doing uh, with the baseline um, the um, the note that they're playing is uh, the first note is an A um, so you can play Okay, so you could just you could just play the bass line if you can read bass line. If you can't read bass line, you could do what the bass line is doing. Basically, haha. -ha, basically, you can look at the first note of what you're supposed to be playing in the um, in the treble line. Okay, so you could the first line, the first note is an A, and and that's actually the tonic, the key of the note. So you can kind of play. Uh, here's a little trick for you. <clears throat> if you're if you're wanting to figure out what to play, baseline wise, you could do a <clears throat> you could do a, an arpeggio scale. That's every third note. One, two, three. One, two, three. Like that. So so you could play. So play sort of randomly the notes of the um, of of that um, arpeggio scale of of the A, and you can actually get a decent accompaniment with that one. And you don't have to do it. Like that. So it gives you sort of the idea of the bass line. So, um, so if, if any of this stuff is going by too fast, just start with the tonic, the, the name of the key and kind of, kind of get yourself started there. And a really safe two notes to play are the tonic and the dominant, which is the tonic is the, is the name of the key. And the dominant is five notes away from there, so the fifth. So on a violin, it's really easy. So if you're on the first finger, which is the A, the tonic is the first finger on the D string. Like that. So da 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 da
And you play both together. So there's a lot of things you can do instead of just sitting there with your instrument on your lap. That's You did not pay for your instrument to have it sitting in your lap. You should be playing your instrument. So let's play this tune one more time. I'll play it um, at, a, at a decent rate. <clears throat> Annika's here. Yay! Hi, Annika. So, um, Annika, we are on page 17 uh, in, the, um, in the Neil Giles First Collection. Um, and we're playing a tune called... Hmm. Uh, Wadi Lang or the Lifting of the Linen. So let me make sure that I get this up here again. Here we go. So one, two, one, two, three. Let's go on to the next tune. The next tune I've got listed here is Lady Charlotte Murray. Uh, it's a jig. And it is on page, what is it, nine. And it's down the page, Lady Charlotte Murray's jig. This is a really great tune. So... Listen to the way that I'm playing the actual rhythms of this tune, okay? Listen to the rhythms. Lady Charlotte Murray's jig. Now, if you're um, if you're new to the new to the group, you might look at the uh, the rhythm that's written there, and that's actually not the rhythm that I was playing, which is fine. Um, the rhythm that is written is just straight um, straight uh, eighth notes. But the thing is, is when you're playing, 
when you're playing a, a jig in, in the Scottish style, you should be playing this rhythm. Even if it's not written in the music, you should always play that for a jig. Um, and this one is really nice because it also has the underlying beat in it that looks like that. The underlying beat, the ta 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 ta. Now this, and Kim is is has got something going on here. She's she's recognizing something about this tune. This is a typically very Scottish sounding jig. This is not Irish. If you were to play this in an Irish style, it just really wouldn't work very well. The tune needs to be a little bit slower. And, the, and those, those rhythms that I've written here are really tight. You want to get those tight. And it's, this tune really benefits from not playing it too fast. Um, and if you ever have a chance to play this with um, a cello accompaniment, if you look at what's going on with the bass line there, boom, 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 boom. So it's just, it's got this nice boom, boom, nice pulse. And if you've ever seen a um, a, a pipe band, a, a bagpipe uh, band, uh, pipes and drums, they've got the bass drum, boom, boom. And that's really what's going on right here. That's that's that kind of a feel. So um, let's play this one together. Okay, this one has a really really great feel to it. I like this tune. Sorry about that. My bow got caught in my shirt there for a second. Um, and is my audio still here? Can you hear me? Okay. All right. So when we are playing this tune, there's a, and a third measure. Let's look at the third measure. Okay. The third measure has um, this... Now that's a little tricky. Okay, so th that third measure. Okay, you can um, just go. You don't have to. You don't have to roll up to it. You could just play the first note, and ignore that little the the um, the F uh, F sharp there. So you, uh, you can go on that measure. So feel free to omit any notes that are bothering you, and you can kind of get into them later. But just to get the basic, um, the basic melody of this, um, if it's still flying by too fast, um, what I like to do is I like to play the outsides of each one of those triplets if you play the outsides you know if you play um if you play this note and this note 
and this note and this note and eliminate that little middle note you can actually get a lot of um, a lot of the melody in um, can somebody uh, real quickly just tell me if you're hearing me okay um, because I just want to make sure uh, that I am being heard because uh, apparently some folks have lost their audio so but um that's good okay so so this is um this is what you can uh, what you can play instead of every note you can play the outside notes So there's lots and lots of um, possibilities here. Just play something. You, you don't you don't have to play every single note. Uh, that's the nice thing about if you have the music in front of you, you can kind of play the first note of of, of the phrases and stuff like that. Um, look at the very last um, line, the penultimate um, measure, the the measure before the last measure. It goes. But if you look really carefully, it's got that little, little trill. Okay. You can do this. Okay. So there's a lot. Um, you could do some, um, some turns there. A turn is uh, playing the note. Playing the note above it. The note again, the note below it. Okay. Okay, so there we go. So let's play this tune one more time. Jig notation looks like that. So you've got a dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth note followed by an eighth note. T ta ta t ta 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 ti tum ta ta ti. And you should feel that underneath it. You should feel this bum 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 Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. Um, there's a Beethoven um, movement, I think, in the Ninth Symphony um, that has that same rhythm. So, okay, next tune. Um, oh, Major Graham of Inchbrucky, Inch uh, Strathspe. Uh, there's something special about this tune that I want to share with you, but let's get that. That's on page, also on page nine. It's above, it's. Um, it's the next no it's the next tune up okay so i'll just play this for you real quick just to show you it says slow notice it says slow so it's going to i'm going to play it slow <laughs>
pretty. It's a really pretty tune. Uh, Major Graham. Now, um, Neil Gow um, and Robert Burns were actually acquainted with each other, and when Robert Burns heard this tune, he was very uh, inspired by it. He loved the, the way this sounded. And so he wrote a set of words to go with this. And it became one of his most famous songs, actually. And the, the thing is, is that most people don't use this melody for the uh, for for singing the song nowadays. So so uh, this is um, this is the original melody for the Robert Burns song. And so um, so I'll I'll sing and play for you. So this is this is the song. You can play along. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody that's sweetly played in tune. This fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I would love thee still, my dear, till love the seas gang dry. Till all the seas gang dry, my love, and the rocks melt with the sun. And I will love thee still, my dear, till the sands of life shall run. And fare thee will, my own true love, and fare thee will, oh, and I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand miles. Okay, so it's My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose, um, that uh, Robert Burns wrote the uh, words to this particular melody. So, um, uh, and now, nowadays they don't actually use this melody anymore. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why they changed them. Um, I think that, that is a perfectly nice, nice version. Um, so let's play this one more time together to, to play this. This is what I would call a lyrical Strathspey. So... <laughs> So that's Major Graham. Yeah, I included that because I thought um, I wanted to tell you folks the story of the of the where Robert Burns got his his melody for that. Now let's go on to page twenty eight. Page twenty eight, and I'll click on the thing here. Twenty eight, and it's the tune at the top of the. Um, of the page there on page 28 is Dunkeld Hermitage. This is another one of those reels. Uh, a lot of the same stuff applies with this reel as the first reel that we did, uh, the um, Wadi Lang. Um, this one is a, um, uh, it's, this is, um, I believe, in the E minor, so, so it's uh, kind of, um, yeah, it's an E minor. So this is how this one goes here.
So there's that tune for you, the Dunkeld Hermitage Reel. Um, it has, a, like I said, it has a lot of the same kind of things that the other one uh, had. A lot of the same rhythms of this. So if that is too much for you, you can... So turn those burls into um, into quarter notes, or you can do taps there as well. You hear that? It sounds a lot like like that. Okay. It's, it's the same kind of stories. A lot of these, you can use the same tricks. Um, and and that's, that's the thing, is that a lot of these tunes are very similar to each other in structure, so you can use the same kind of tricks. So let's play this one again together, okay? Dunkeld Hermitage. So... And the last chord chord that I, I played was I played the the tonic note the E with the dominant, which is the the uh, note above it on the next string is the B. So that's a that's sort of like an E minor chord. It's not really a chord because you need three notes to do a chord. That would be a chord. Uh, but if you play it. That um, in rock and roll parlance, that's called a power chord when you're playing the dominant and the um, when you're playing the tonic and the dominant together. It it, uh, it has the main notes of a lot of chords. You, you could play that in a major key, or you could play it in a minor key, and it fits in. So um, you don't have to worry about them playing minors and major um, chords. You can just play that that interval, the fifth interval. And it works really nicely as a uh, as an accompaniment chord. So let's play another tune. The Marcus. Oh, this next tune is cool. It's a cool tune. Um, it's uh, on page twenty one. The Marcus of Tully Barden's jig. The Marcus of Tully Barden has some really neat tunes named after him, but um, he's got the. Um, it's got the Italian word for jig, giga, or giga, uh, but this is um, this is a nine eight, so it's it's done. It's a it's a slow three, bum two, dee 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 dum ba dee da dee dee da dee dee da. So think about one two three one two three instead of like with the regular jigs, da dee dee dum ba dee one two one two. So this one is in one, two, three, dum bum ba dee dee da dee 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 dum bum two, three, bum ba dee 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 bum ba dee 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 dum. Okay, so it's a slow three. 
Now listen to this tune. It is a neat tune. It's one of my favorite jigs. It's a 9-8 tune. Don't be afraid of the two flats. It's not a big deal. It's it's fine. You're in um you're in G minor, so you're you're gonna be fine. That's a really neat tune, and it, it's an unusual tune, um, and um, so I, I like that it's it's got this, it's sort of really dark sounding and very powerful. Um, so um, the the roll up on the second group of um, of notes in the first measure that you've got here, that's really not that bad. It's just going right up the scale. So I just slur those together. Okay, and it's just um, it's just really powerful. Just kind of push right into those. And this is the same deal with it's a type of a jig. So do that same um, do that same uh, rhythm with a, with the dotted character that I that I showed you here whenever you get a group of three eighth notes together. Okay? So let's try this one again together. Okay? So this is dum bum ba dee 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 dee. This is such a great tune. One, two, one. So there's the Marquis of Tully Barden's jig. So what's on what's next on our list of tunes to play? The Marquis of Tully Barden's jig. The Fife Hunt. Oh, the Fife Hunt is a strange yet wonderful tune. Um it's got a lot of um if this is the one I'm thinking of. Is uh yes. I was actually at a music um symposium. Um, <laughs> the fife hunt uh, is a good example of of the use of uh, syncopation, and I was at a music symposium um, 
God, maybe almost 20 years ago, uh, at Colonial Williamsburg, and the fellow in there said that um, syncopation did not ha did not occur in um, Western music until it was introduced in jazz by the Africans, and I <laughs> I I had to uh, afterwards I said. I, I really don't think that's true. Syncopation has been around in Western music for a long time. And this is a good example of that. This is, um, a lot of things were, were introduced into music for jazz and stuff by, by the African population. But syncopation was not one of those things. This is, syncopation is just not playing on the regular beat. So, um, this is, this is a really neat tune to hear, um, for, for for that syncopation so so listen to this Page 13. Page 13. Fife Hunt. It's at the top of the, of the page. Um, page 13 of the PDF. It's page 10 of the original document, but it's the 13th page of the PDF. Um, notice what I played when it says trill. I actually played a... You're welcome. I actually played a turn there. So the trill is actually not a trill there. I... And the way that I play that is I play the note that's there. For instance, the C C natural. I go up to the um, to the next note, the D, and I go down to the lower note. So it's it's C D C. B, C. Okay. If um, if you're trying to figure out the bass notes, you just have to remember what all cows do, because all cows eat grass, right? All cows eat grass, and those are the names of the notes in the spaces starting at the bottom. So the bottom space is A. The next one is C. The next one is E, and the next one is G. All cows eat grass. So if you want to do that, what's the what's the name of the note for the that the bass is playing there? They're playing four cows. They're playing two C's. So they're playing E da 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 and the way that I figured out the next note is it's only one note up, so it's C D. Okay, so so you can you can kind of pick out the bass lines that way too. If you actually start to learn what the bass note line, you know, the bass note note names are, all cows eat grass. Okay, so one note up, same note. 
Okay, so that's that's how you play that. So let's play this fife hunt one more time. Okay, a little slower, a little slower. So there's, there's the fife hunt, the fife hunt, the fife hunt. Um, I guess it's a, in a hunt in fife. Um, okay, let's look at uh, page fifteen now. Page fifteen. On page fifteen. And we're going to be down toward the, the bottom. Okay, Sir Alexander Don's Strathspey. And the reason that I chose this particular one is because... Yeah, I'm glad you like that tempo. Um, Sir Alexander Don's Strathspey is a really, really good Strathspey to learn and practice your up-driven bow. It's a pretty simple tune. It's not that hard to play, but it's got a lot of really great places to play that updriven bow. So I'm going to play it for you, and and see if you can see where I'm putting that updriven bow. Okay. So that's Sir Alexander Don's Strathspey. He had another Strathspey written by uh, um, by William Marshall, and William Marshall's Sir Alexander Don Strathspey is exceedingly difficult, which you might expect from William Marshall's music. And it's really fun to play, and it's in the key of E flat, and it's oh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful um, tune. But this is a really good tune too. This is very powerful, very driving. It's not that hard to play either. It's 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 a good, uh, fairly simple Strathspey, and it's good to uh, learn your um, your arrow strokes. Now, what I'm doing, just to show you what I'm doing here, is I'm going down, up, up. Now. And the second up, down, up, up, the second up is off the string, like that. Not off really high, but just, and then the next one, the next is another up, and it's at the frog. You can see how, how close to the frog I am. And it's so short that it almost doesn't exist, and I go up, down, to the, um, to the E. 
like that. So. You see how that works? So that's your arrow stroke. Down, up, up, lift, up, down. Okay. So if you're wanting to practice your arrow stroke, this tune is a really good one to do it with. It gives you lots of different opportunities to do it. A really good place to play those is when you have three of the same notes together. Neil Gao writes a lot of tunes like this. And he was famous for the updriven bow. So it's kind of nice to kind of find tunes written by the master of the updriven bow and play his tunes because you can really um, play them nicely that way. <clears throat> so the last uh, line has a bunch of 16th notes. And I've talked to you folks about this before, but when you, whenever you see 16th notes in a Strats Bay, you have to play them like this. <coughs> Pardon me. The first note of the group of 16th notes is long, and then the rest of them are, are catching up with them. So that uh, last line... I'll play that last line again. So let me let me play this whole tune and we'll all play it together, okay? So that's the tune, Sir Alexander Don's Strathspey. Now, usually I would stop at an hour. This has been an hour, but I've got three more tunes to um, to play here on the list. I've got uh, Mr. Menzi of uh, Kildare's Reel, Tullough Gorham, and Kill a Cranky. So I hope you folks don't mind, but I'm going to go a little bit over the hour this week. I'm going to, um, uh, I, I put 10 down. I thought that was, that was going to be a, a little bit, um, a, a lot of tunes, but uh, the, I just wanted to let you really hear some of the really good tunes in this particular collection, if that's okay with everybody. If you don't mind, we'll go over the hour a little bit this week. So let me get a little bit. So the next tune that I would like to do is on page 20. So here's, yay, page 20. And the tune that we're going to do on page 20 is the reel down there at the bottom. And it's a fun reel, but you got to be a little bit careful with the with the notes on the B section. 
because the B section um, can um, can kind of throw you a little bit just um, just with the, the notes in the scale. Uh, if you look at it, we're we're in um, we're in the key of of um, of G technically, uh, but um, not exactly. We're actually in the key of D mixolydian. So, um, and what that means is that the seventh note of the scale is flat. Seventh note. So what you're playing is. That's the key, and the, that that's a very typical mode, uh, the mixolydian mode in um, in Scottish music. Uh, that those are the notes uh, basically that um, that the bagpipe plays. They play in a mixolydian uh, mode. That's why they sound the way that they do. Um, they can't they can't play that. They can't play the sharp seven. And that's what this is written in. This is written in the in the mixolydian mode. Um, so here we go. So this is uh, the the um, Mr. Menzies of Caldera's reel. played the wrong note. Does anybody know where I played the wrong note? And the reason I played the wrong note is because it just kind of sounded better to me there. It's actually on the last line. I played a C sharp in the second measure of the last line. That's where I played the C sharp. It's actually not a C sharp. It's supposed to be a C natural. last two lines you can get away with playing the C sharp it doesn't actually sound bad okay so it's actually not a disaster if you play it that way and I've actually heard this tune played that way um, going between the major and the mixolydian. Uh, that's actually something that is done um, just for musical uh, variety. Um, if you're on, a, on an instrument that can't play accidentals, though, if you're playing an instrument that only has those notes, like a harp, for instance, or a bagpipe, you can't play that. And, uh, so if you're going to be playing with somebody that, that is stuck within the mode, don't play the C-sharps. Um, so there actually is a, uh, there is a musical reason. Uh, Diana is shaming me. Yes, I'm that's just bad, bad fiddler. But um, let's play this tune again together. This is a really good, uh, good tune. Um, Mr. Menzi, um, uh, I don't know who this particular Mr. Menzi is, but here in Virginia, the personal secretary to Lord Dunmore was a fellow by the name of Edward Menzi. And uh, he was also from Scotland. And uh, when Dunmore left uh, Williamsburg to go back to Scotland um, during the American Revolution, uh, Edward Menzies stayed and, uh, and became a, a merchant here in Williamsburg. So a lot of these uh, Scots stayed um, here in town even after, after the Revolution. So here's Mr. Menzies of Kildare's reel. So... <laughs>
Mr. Menzies of Cold Air is Real. It's a really good tune. Um, one, one thing that I was doing, just let me just share this one thing with you, is uh, just Boeing was... <laughs> I'm doing that thing with the. I'm doing uh, the three notes in a in a slur, and that that kind of gets it a little bit off kilter. So it gives you a little uh, sort of a slight syncopation feel. So it lets it roll a little bit. So experiment a little bit with that sort of thing so down up 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 down up 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 so so the first one so down up Down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, up, up. Don't do it the whole way through like that, but just kind of try that. And it'll give you a little bit of a different um, articulation. And it kind of gives it a, a nice little backbeat. Let's go to page 21 in the PDF. The next page down. Okay, the Marquis... Uh, no, we already did that one. The Tullach Gorum. Tullach Gorham is supposed to be the king of all Strathspeys. I'm not sure why, but it's supposed to be. And um, so it, it bears a little bit of mentioning here. Tullach Gorham is in the collection. Um, it's in other collections. Uh, I've seen it in earlier collections. I've seen it in lots of later collections, obviously. But this Tullach Gorham is a very, very uh, popular Strathspey. And so... It's got, I, I like it, it's okay. It's a tough tune. It's a tough tune to play. There's a lot of going across strings. You're just jumping across strings. It's a bear to get the real feel for this one correct. Let me just uh, show you. I'll do it really slowly, and I'll 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 have I'll play I'll play it so that you can see what's going on with my bow. Okay. I'll play it really slowly so you can you can look at the recording again after we're done with this when when it's been um been recorded and you can look at what I'm doing with the bowing. I'm going to be playing some um some of the um uh, updriven bow in this one. So so watch it, play along if you'd want, but kind of watch along with this one, okay? <laughs>
Okay, so I hope you were able to watch what's going on. Notice again, the 16th note. It's it's basically a rule. You gotta play them like that. Dee da 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 dum ba da da yum ba dum. Always, always, always. I've never come across a stress bay where you don't do it that way. So, so the last tune that I would like to play with everybody. It's it's not really that difficult to play. It's on page twenty nine. Um, and it is uh, called Killer Cranky. And it is just, it's a really famous, old, old um, tune. It's, uh, it's more of a, a folk melody of Scotland. Um, and um, it just, it, 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 uh, it's, it's said to have been named after the, uh, the Battle of Killicranky. And um, that, the, um, that the, um, the pipers were playing. It also... Um, there's there's a couple songs that go with this, okay? So um and it's it's kind of straight ahead. So, so think of it more more like march like. So here's Kill It Cranky. Pretty pretty tune, and it's it's think of it as a march. Ba da dum bum be da da dum two three four one two three four. Okay, so it, it works really nicely as a as a march. So if you're ever putting together a competition set or something like that, think about Killer Cranky for that because Killer Cranky has a really good uh, good sound for that sort of thing. Um, so pushing it forward, dee da dee dee dum ba ya da 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 dum bum ba da dee 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 da dum bum ba. So think about what it looks like when you're um, when you're uh, watching a, um, a a pipe band. The, the kilts are swaying back and forth. Dee dee dum bum be da da dum bum bum. So it's got really, really nice uh, sound for a, for a, um, a march. So um, let's play this tune one more time together, and then um, then that'll be it for for the day. So one, two, one, two.
that's Killa Cranky, and that's um, our weekly gathering for um, for this week. Uh, thank you all for for joining in. Uh, it's always nice to see folks and um, having you uh, contact me afterwards and uh, asking me questions. Um, it's not a requirement, but I do appreciate the the donations that you folks have been uh, been sending. I really, really do appreciate that. That uh, helps uh, helps keep this uh, keeps this going. So, um, I think probably next week we might look at Neil Gao's second collection. Uh, if you like um, the Neil Gao stuff, um, so I will. Um, find that it's uh it's in the imslp as well so finding these online is very nice to um to be able to do so it's nice to see y'all you'll have a nice week uh stay safe bye bye now